We turn now to 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 10. As each one has received a special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Whoever speaks, let him speak as it were the utterances of God. Whoever serves, let him do so as by the strength which God supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. In three passages in Scripture, we read about the gifts of the Spirit, apart from this passage in 1 Peter 4. Those three passages are Romans chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and in Ephesians chapter 4. And in all those passages we find an emphasis on love coming very close along with the gifts. In 1 Corinthians 12, for example, where there's an extensive description of the gifts of the Spirit and their function in the body of Christ, Paul goes on to speak in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 about love. In Romans chapter 12, after speaking about the gifts in verses 3 to 8, he speaks about love in verse 9. And likewise in Ephesians, where we are told about the gifts that the risen Christ gives to the church, in verse 11 and 12 of Ephesians 4, we are told about love in verses 15 and 16. And so we see in all those passages a close link between love, which is the fruit of the Spirit, and the gifts. We see exactly the same here in 1 Peter chapter 4. Verse 8, keep fervent in your love. And then verses 10 and 11, he speaks about the exercise of the gifts. Now the reason for this is, very clearly, what we see in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1, where it says, Pursue after love and earnestly desire the gifts of the Spirit. If we desire the gifts of the Spirit without first pursuing after love, then we shall receive the gifts and use them in a selfish way, like the prodigal son who received his father's gifts and went off to spend it on himself. This is how many people are using the gifts of the Spirit today, to spend it on themselves. It is because they have not first pursued after love. They have sought for the fullness of the Spirit, not to be flooded with love, but in order that they might exercise some spectacular gift. That is wrong. We need to seek for love first. We need to pursue after love. And then we discover that because our love for others brings within us a desire to help them, to give them gifts, like anyone who loves would like to give a gift to the one he loves. We desire to help them with a gift, and we don't have it, so we go back to God and ask him to give us a gift. What for? Not for our own benefit, but to help the other, because we love the other. This is the proper context in which to seek God for gifts. And so, he says, be fervent in your love for one another, verse 8. And because you love one another, you will seek to help one another. You will be hospitable to one another, verse 9. You will seek to minister, to serve one another. And that service can take the form of gifts of prophecy or healing or a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom or the gift of helps. It can be many, many gifts. But as each one has received a gift, this is another thing that we see mentioned in Scripture quite often, that God desires to give some gift to every member of the body of Christ. It's mentioned clearly in Romans 12 and in 1 Corinthians 12. God desires to give some gift. It may not be the same gift. It may not be a gift that brings you into the limelight, like an apostle or a prophet may have. You may be a housewife at home, yet you can have a gift of the Spirit too, a gift from God, as each one has received a gift. Employ it in serving one another. The mark of our love for one another is that we are willing to wash one another's feet. The gift we receive from God is like that bucket of water which Christ took 
at the Last Supper. What did he do with it? He didn't wash his own feet, he washed the feet of his disciples. And the gifts we receive from God are like that bucket of water that we need to use to wash the feet of others, to serve others. If we do not use it for that purpose, we are abusing the gifts. Then we would be like the prodigal son who received the father's gifts and instead of using it for the father and for his brothers, he spent it on himself. And so it says here, as each one has received a gift, what must you do with it? The gifts are to bless others, to serve others. Use them to bless others. Use them to serve others. Be sure to use them to help the others. And if you serve, it says further, do so by the strength which God supplies. God gives us strength in order to serve others. And we need to do it in God's strength. This is why we need to seek God that we might be filled with the Holy Spirit. Whatever service that we do to another, we are to do it in the strength which God supplies. If we are going to serve others with our own cleverness and our own ability, then of course we do not need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But it says in the middle of verse 11, Whoever serves, let him do so by the strength which God supplies. So it's not enough that we just have an attitude or desire to serve one another. We can have that desire that's motivated by love. And yet if we don't have that gift of power given by God, we won't have anything useful to give to others. This is why we need to seek God for spiritual gifts. Jesus, in the first 30 years of his life, had a heart full of love. And yet he couldn't serve others until he was anointed by the Holy Spirit in the River Jordan. Then he received gifts. And this is the power that we also need. And this is the emphasis here in verse 11. If you serve, do it with the strength which God supplies. In the last part of verse 10, we are told that we are to be good stewards. That is, managers of God's house who have been given food to distribute to God's people of the manifold grace of God. God's grace comes forth, to use a human illustration, in many colors. Many aspects of God's grace can be manifested through the different members of the body of Christ. You, dear friend, can manifest a particular aspect of God's grace to others in the way that God has dealt with you in your life, the way he brought you up in your peculiar background, makes you have a unique contribution to the body of Christ. You need to serve the body of Christ with that grace that you received from God and allow another to manifest another aspect of God's grace. In the church, there is no one-man ministry. The grace of God being manifold is ministered through different members of the body and we need to have openness for others to minister to, not only the ones who have special gifts. We are all stewards of God's many-colored grace. If we speak, we need to speak as the utterances of God. If your gift is to minister the word of God, it's very important that you hear what God has said. Only then can you speak as the utterance of God himself. Otherwise, it's better not to speak in the name of God. If you have not heard God, if all you've done is study the book, then you can just share your thoughts. But you cannot speak as God's mouthpiece unless you have heard God. And that requires discipline and waiting on God. And that's important. If you speak in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, learn to listen to God first so that you can speak as the utterance of God himself. If you serve, do it in the strength which God supplies. Finally, whatever you do, do it so that God may be glorified. We are not to do any service, even if it is cooking a meal or preaching a sermon or building a church or shepherding the flock. Never so that people can look at us and say, what a wonderful shepherd, or what a wonderful preacher, or what a wonderful meal he cooked, or what lovely hospitality in that home. God must be glorified through Jesus Christ, because to him alone, it says here, belongs the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Glory belongs to God alone, and when we touch it, or take it, it is just like robbing what doesn't belong to us. If you rob somebody else's purse, it's in exactly the same category as taking the glory for something that God has done through you. Let's be careful here, never to touch the glory of God, to serve others with the gifts God gives us, so that God alone 
may be glorified. 